Ring, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the, this event is for everyone who is interested in learning and development, uh, for everyone who deals with tools and want to share their experience and uh, give some tips and tricks and exchange um, experience. Uh, what do we want to get out of this? Uh, first of all, we know that we will not find all the solutions for all the challenges, but at least we can exchange ideas and uh, have some inspiration, networking and some fun. Um, and uh, yeah, I would like to ask you to write in the chat, uh, who are you, where are you from, um, what do you do? Where, um, so we can know a little bit better each other. And while you're writing, I can tell a little bit about myself. So I'm Olga, I am software engineer and I work in e-learning field. I am a co-founder of Workademy. This is an edtech startup based in Berlin. At Workademy, we create learning management system for growing companies. And um, yeah, I love tech. Uh, I wrote some books uh, on software development, and uh, this is why the mix of uh, e-learning training, uh, learning and development and technology is a very, very exciting topic for me. Um, uh, so uh, this is about Workademy. Please follow us on LinkedIn. We post their interesting stuff about learning and development and also updates on these events. Uh, uh -huh. so, so there are people from Berlin, there are people from Serbia, uh, Toby, Eindhoven, uh, I'm in Berlin, I already told, uh, nice. Uh, so, and uh, this event will be, as I already said, will be about the relationship uh, with the tools and learning and development. And uh, this topic will be introduced. I'm not alone here. I'm here with Toby. Uh, the topic will be introduced by Toby. And Toby is senior uh, learning and development specialist in CH Robinson. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, Toby, please uh, take it from here. Uh, make a short intro of yourself and uh, let's bootstrap uh, the topic. Perfect, cool. Uh, well, first, Olga, thank you very much for organising this. Obviously, with all the, uh, the the stresses that are going on in in real life, so uh, uh, I hope uh, you and the family and friends and stuff are for for doing okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it kind of puts you puts uh, life into perspective a lot of the times when these kind of things happen. So uh, so I hope everything's all right that side. Um, but thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, so Toby Newman, um, my kind of uh alter ego i suppose is the never-ending learner um so you can you, you know you can search for my name i've got my own little website which i kind of try and do uh a, as well but it's, it's more of a side hobby but um i've been in lnd for god a long time um i think almost 20 years now give or take i've done a lot of different roles um mainly kind of front house so like you know face-to-face uh, -face training um, and a bit of analytics. And uh, now I'm doing a lot more of the, um, how do I put it, the, the strategy side of things of, of learning and development. Um, and again, I don't know everything, that's definitely not true, uh, but I'm, I try and stay curious uh, and I try and kind of keep an open mind and doing different things. Um, one of the reasons why I kind of, I you know, love to, to to talk about this with with Olga and with you guys is that um even with it before um uh covid came in the technology for me within lnd was was critical um and it's not just about an lms a learning management system or or kind of having i know a, a coursera or a, a udemy or a linkedin learning um, load of stuff and going, yep, yeah, there we go, we've, we've got our tool. Um, to me, it needs to be kind of thought about systematically and have a, a strategy of where you are and where you're going. And um, I am a strong believer in that um, there is no going back 
in terms of how we used to do things in face to face. Of I think you know now that COVID is done, well, done ish. Um, that I think there'll be this overwhelming urge to go back to classrooms because you know, we've missed it for two years or whatever it is. But I honestly think within a few months, it will settle more, much more towards the technology front uh, than it has ever been before. Uh, and I think that as an l and um, that we kind of, as a duty to ourselves and to our companies, need to be much more familiar with tooling not necessarily be software development. I am not a coder uh, like like Olga. I you kind know, of I wouldn't wouldn't know my way around it. Um, but I understand, at least I feel I understand the needs of the our company and I think in general companies and that where we need to start thinking about. So I think my my first kind of point would be that we we need to be much more tool focused and, and just te learning technology focused. That's the kind of the first one. My, my second point, maybe this is a bit more contentious, is that I have been, should I say, I've, I've probably been convinced of this over the last few months, is that we need to work more with HR, not less. So I was always in the mind, you know, kind of up to a few years ago, that it was LD and HR, two separate things. You had HR systems, you had l and systems separate. Nowadays, I've been speaking to a lot of different people, and I think, and I kind of tend to agree with, with them, that what you, when we talk about learning and development in HR, what we really should be talking about is career development, is people development, and that can be HR. It also can be l and um, So it needs to have both, and we need to be kind of partnering this because, I mean, at least for me, in my experience, I can't say let's create a um, a learning learning tech strategy and not talk to HR because it just wouldn't work. They would just yeah. kind of throw it out the window and go, "What the hell are you doing? No, we're doing it this way. We want this tool. We want that tool." So it needs to be a combination of uh, the not necessarily a combination of tooling because they are separate. There are HR tools that are specifically designed for HR. Uh, you know, HRS systems. Um, and then there are learning tools that are specifically designed for l and But they, in terms of a strategy, they need to sit under one umbrella. That's kind of, you know, for me, it's like uh, something that I've, I've felt is, is important. Um, I'd be interested to see what's on that particular point, if anybody agrees or disagrees or has had experience of, of that kind of confusion or or maybe that they're that they're as far as they're aware, there isn't a learning tech strategy. And there may be a learning strategy, like you know, our North Star is to self-develop everybody or to you know to develop a learning culture or whatever it is. But I'd be interested to know is anybody's actually got any um, learning tech strategy specifically. Um, I I think that uh, the the learning strategy should come first and then technology should support the, the learning strategy. But uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, because you can't have, because, yeah, the learning tech strategy will support your learning strategy. So you, if you, you want to go in a certain, like for example, uh, within CH Robinson, um, we are a, if I'm being honest, we are very, a relatively immature tech company in terms of learning uh we've been around for over 100 years so it's not like an immature company but in terms of the technology we've got for learning we've only got i say only but for a company our size you've got kind of seventeen thousand people across the world we've only got an lms um and for those of you that are part of the uh, the shakers community i recently put on a little question because we've only just bought uh skillsoft for for our employees and that's the you know, 18,000 courses and you know i've dealt with i've done udemy i've done linkedin learning so i'm used to those but just um you know interested in getting other people's opinion on how that they roll out that kind of experience um but if we want and we believe that we should be moving towards a um a self-developed um self-aware um 
kind of environment where individuals are empowered to do their own learning journey and, and develop themselves. But you need the technology to go along with that. You can't just say to people, yeah, go self-developed, but then not give them any resources, any tools to, to do that. And then not just giving them tools, but then you need the L&D tools internally to make use of that stuff. For example, you would need to have asynchronous learning uh, tools like Miro, for example, mm -hmm. to help people be self-developed. Yes, you've got, you know, like uh, Skillsoft or LinkedIn Learning, but eventually you would need something like an LXP, um, you know, like a, a How Now or a, a LearnAmp or a, a Degreed or a Filtered or all these different kinds of LXP, so learning experience platforms, to be able to bring all those in, because then that helps you, helps the individuals and helps us to develop the individuals even further. Milka. Yeah, hi. Um, it, it's, a, it's a really great question, Toby. And I think um, how I like to see it is really look at the employee journey um, to yeah. understand who are the stakeholders um, involved in all the points. And you will see that there are certain moments where you mentioned the HR, right? So where HR hiring managers will play a bigger role or managers in general, and then throughout the the course of employee cycle, employees will be more in charge of what they're doing. Yeah. So I think um, when it comes to, if you want to kind of start this uh, tech focused or tech savvy environment where everybody knows how to do it, you need to start from the very beginning. And I think yeah. the onboarding will be your first, first challenge to oh, solve. Yeah. Um, into, start, you know, start right at the start. Yeah, get yeah, used yeah. to that environment. Yeah, exactly. So. If I think about, I would focus on certain moments in time for the learner, for the employee, if we talk about in-house um, L&D and try to figure that out. If you do that well and you test and you see how people react, how you can get a lot of feedback, then you move fo forward, right? You cannot create, you know, the whole experience as such in the, in the, in the uh, kind of, uh, Absolutely, yeah. you know, so I would look at it as a, very specific on the employee journey and how does tech solve those specific issues employees encounter. Um, and for that, we have a lot of different uh, platforms we use, but then we need to make sense out of the data we are getting because yeah, with technology, the you get data, is right? So important, yeah. <laughs> so you better know what you're going to do with that data if you collect it. And I think, you know, just uh, putting more tech and putting new platforms without thinking, okay, what do they serve for and what are the KPIs that I'm going to look at or what I'm going to you know, do about what um, we collect. It's really also a big question to ask when developing. Oh, strategy, absolutely. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you make you know, so many great points. So um, I think it's important that's, that you have the overarching strategy. So for example, if you've got a, if HR have already created a hire to retire framework, so they know, kind of where they're, like you said, the, the, the employee experience, uh, where are the touch points? What do we want to support them all the way through? And then as a learning tech strategy, you can then go, right, okay, so what, what do I need to do um, for onboarding? What tools do we have at the moment? Where do we want to go with that? What about then uh, maybe um, systems um introduction or benefit may not benefits that's very specific hr but each touch point along that um, hr framework there you should have an idea at least of what you want to do but like melek said you should then think right let's just do everything at the same time it needs to be right where are our priorities first we'll get that sold in to say are we agreed that this is the structure of our this is the strategy of our tech like this is where we are now. This is where we want to be in six months, a year's time. This is where we want to be in three year, five years time. And just very quickly, the reason why we need to look so far into the future for tech is because it takes, it, depending on the size of the company, but it usually takes about two years to get a platform in, especially if you're looking at an LXP or an LMS. By the time you've done all your requirements, you've done all your uh, you've gone out to different vendors, you've done uh, role plays, you've done um, pilot systems, all these kind of things. You've done all the, and then the 
all the technical jargon, so SSO, single sign-on, you've done all the integrations, all that kind of stuff. It takes at least two years. I mean, it, it took me four years to get an LXP into my last company. So you've got to look that far ahead because you think, well, where are we now and where do we want to be so that we can start to build those in? Um, so, but then you're absolutely right. Once you've got that strategy and people are going, yep, that's the direction we want to go, then I think onboarding is, I think it's not saying that it's the only one we should do. It's the obvious focus because, you know, that's how people start in. But you've also got to look after all the existing people. So for me, if you're looking if, from scratch of a learning tech, I would say um, something that's going to help onboarding to start them in that mindset of self-development or whichever direction you're going is to start them understanding the use of tools but also something that's going to hit, you know, a good chunk of your of your people. For example, bringing in like a Skillsoft or a Workday, um, a um, a learning LinkedIn Learning or a Udemy or a Coursera or whatever tool it is that looks after the vast majority of it, and then kind of almost multitask that you at least you've got those not low hanging fruit, but you've got those basics. Then you can start to to, to move up. Um, for me, the, the difference uh, that I noticed once implements LXP, I think Maliki, you were, you were absolutely spot on with the analytics. That was the biggest thing that I saw. Uh, well, actually, there's two things. The first one was the, the analytics. So an LXP is opposed to, a, to an LMS. So for example, comparing in my last company, we had Cornerstone and we had Degreed. It is so much different in terms of how they work. First of all, it's, I kind of class LMSs as dumping grounds. It's basically you put all your content in. Uh, and again, I've never been an instructional designer, so apologies uh, for those that are. Um, I, I don't mean that as a disrespect, but it's because I know there's a lot of work. I've done my own e-learning stuff before. There's a lot of go goes into it, but it's, it's very much, we're going to put that in there and then we assign and we kind of push the training out. Whereas the way an LXP works is you encourage individuals to put all their information in, uh, especially their skills, where do they want to achieve? And then the algorithm starts kicking in to say, oh, if your colleague that's also on a similar, not a similar role, but a similar career path or a similar interest also like this and watch this, what, and then it would encourage you to watch it. And then really good XPs will then kind of encourage you to connect and start communities like Shakers for L&D kind of thing, but, you know, um, a development community or a um, presentation community, and it will start to really build that stuff. But you need people that have an analytics brain to move into L&D to do that. I kind of have an analytics brain, knowing I, I, I'd like to think I ask the right questions, but I don't have the knowledge or the patience, to be honest, to kind of delve through all these different uh, databases that you're going to get and pick out what's where what's trending, what's matching. Now, I know you can get tools like uh, Tableau and these kind of things that bring all this data together, but you need somebody that understands Tableau. You need somebody that knows what a dashboard is, how to create a dashboard in the first place, because it needs to be created. And good LXPs will help you with this. So Degreed have a whole team specifically to help you with how to analyze the data, how to look at it, how to improve it. Um, but you absolutely need that. And then the other biggest thing that I found with LXP is um, the amount of hands off that you have to do. And what I mean by that is that as a learner, you're so used to kind of pushing content. You're so used to not controlling it, but kind of, encouraging people to do this and you're looking at specific groups and helping them through a program but once you get to an lxp it's that mindset as as an lnd team and especially as an hr team as well to go you got to trust them you got to let them go and trust is a big word for for this this kind of mindset shift because it is all about trust you have to let them not only take the training that they want to take but you've got to trust them that they'll comment in the right way, that you know, some platforms will allow you to upload your content 
their own content to that one. So the one I use that I really like is kpoint.com. Um, they're a great video platform and it allows anybody to upload videos like, you know, uh, here's how to do this shortcut, whatever. Um, but there's a lot of trust and HR specifically struggle with that side of things because it's very much, you know, they're the, the police side of things. I always like to think that we're the nice people and they're the police. But again, if you're in HR, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, but, but for me, it's always been that kind of relationship and that trust really needs to let go and, and let them grow. Simon, uh, Simon. Simon. Simon, sorry, Simon. Don't worry about it. The F is just there at the back anyways. Um, <laughs> I think it's a good point. So I kind of, I don't do, am I, I'm not officially in HR, it's the people <laughs> team. Well, but I think I mean, we I all kind to... of are. I mean, I'm officially an HR person, but I kind yeah. of never refer to myself as HR. Yeah, it's sort of like whatever you, whatever the day or who you're talking to. But exactly. I think one of the, the points that you raise about trust is very much so. We And I think there's lots of literature about L&D professionals having to move into the space of curation versus content creation. Absolutely. Get away from uh, trying to say that we know it all or we know it best and therefore we can guide it to being more about... Um, uh providing environments with yeah with through technology with or otherwise yeah and so yeah. one thing that's missing from the conversation i think is the absolutely crucial and and fundamental role of that person's direct leader in that conversation Ooh, yeah. right because i would say that often in my career i've been faced with leaders coming to me and saying we need these people to do this so go and put them on a program for this we need people to be better leaders let's develop a program and a cur curriculum for them and in some cases it's because that's how they they thought they've learned but if you look at that i call it the iceberg of learning where on top is everything formal and yeah. you know do this program go to this certificate uh, get the certificate but underneath the water is the social learning and the on the job or in the flow of work learning that's where that consideration has to come from and like i think you know going back to the topic it's it's so it's empowering also not only hr but also making sure that 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 leaders in the organizations who are the key and fundamental point of contact for their employees development they need to also begin to embrace that notion that it's not, yeah. you know, they don't know the best and they have to do it. And you see that also with coaching, right? Coaching yeah. isn't about knowing it all. It could be about bringing it out in other people. So that's one on the technology side, as we bring well, up. Just, the, so yeah. just also on the, on the leadership side, on the, on your manager, it's, it's giving them the time. I mean, you're absolutely right. All the points you said, absolutely spot on, but also it's, it's allowing managers the time or giving getting managers to realize that it's not, oh, this person's going to be out for a day doing a workshop and then they're back and they're doing full, full work and off you go. This is, you're going to have to kind of free up people to train when they want to train and, and an hour here and half an hour here and a practice here and a practice there. That is, you know, if I'm being honest, that's a complete kind of F up of your normal schedule of how you would do things. I think we've all been kind of effed up with our schedule <laughs> stuff recently, yeah. right? So I think I think if anything that's coming out of, you know, as we move with hybrid working and things like that, I see the autonomy of one schedule is now, I mean, depending on obviously where you work and things like this, yeah. but the autonomy that people have over their time now is different, right? And I think yes. what it is, is about making in sure general, that, yeah, 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 in general, it's not absolute, but it's, there isn't any more time, just like as every leader I've ever talked to, it's like, I need time to do this. It's like, actually, you only have as much time as I have. We all have 24 seven and that's it. So it's just a matter of where do you want to put this in your priority? I understand this isn't urgent, but it's super important. You you will eventually pay the price if you don't get to the important things. Yeah, that are that why. Yeah. yeah, right. But the, I wanted to say on the technology front and, you know, I, I, I I've come into organizations where I've inherited systems mm -hmm. and I've come into organizations where they had nothing and you have to kind of create things as you go. But I, I think that it's also, it needs to be purpose fit to the, to the human experience within that organization. Right. So for your organization, if it is maybe, you know, um, if you know that people aren't necessarily going to jump on the latest trend tool, that's okay. In fact, if you've got a better sense of how they operate, that might be, where you start, like how do those people observing them, understanding them in terms from like the human design perspective to sort of say, 
well, how do you, like, if I was going to challenge you with learning about this task, if I was going to challenge you with like growing into a leadership role, what is it? Describe for me what you think you would do. And then asking others around them, describe what that person should do. And then understanding that might also help to like guide with what are, what are, what is the tooling out there? Because quite frankly, I think there's a tool now for everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I must admit, I'd never thought about it that way. It's a great way of, of putting it, of kind of describe like rather than just kind of note down your skills and and kind of and here's a package on this skill and that skill but the much more descriptive kind of like you know how would you describe um how you would improve if i'm right in saying maybe trying to summarize what you said simon it'd be rather than saying oh you need to improve your presentation skills off you go but it'd be like oh if you it's more of a discussion around if you need to improve your presentation skills what would that look like for you Mm -hmm. i like what would come to, where would you go first? What would you do? You know, and then yeah. I learned this actually from my nephew, who's 10, who I was working, <laughs> doing, I did classes with him during the pandemic, right? And my brother said, spend some time with him online because I can't handle him anymore. So <laughs> I was like, okay. And he's in Canada, I'm here. And the one thing he taught me is I started to say to him, oh, give him little challenges, right? Like who created Minecraft, right? And then he'd be like, he would turn around and he'd say, hey, Google, who created Minecraft? And the answer would come. And I said, uh. Very clever. So now I know how he learns. Now I had to then. Yeah. So now he uses Siri. Oh, thank you, Simon, for activating Google, Google devices so of everyone like in this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I just, I, I noticed from observing him and then I had to then do other challenges like tell me why your dad should buy you the latest version of Minecraft. How uh-huh. would you go about figuring that problem out, right? And so sometimes that that has helped me to sort of understand Maybe yeah. in terms of what tooling would be best. And then you can use, you know, like, you know, like, oh, so imagine you're building something in Minecraft what, and you can use those examples. And yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Because I think if I look at the way, like our company, like I said, they were kind of relatively immature regarding the learning tech. And I, I must admit, when I first come, I've only been here for four months or so. But when I first came in, I was like, oh, you know, they don't have this. So I can let's do Miro and let's do this tool. And we can do this tool. We can look at LXPs and stuff. And then, you know, as I started to talk to people, they were like, yeah, but we're struggling with, you know, just getting people used to Teams uh, and, and chatting with people and, and that kind of thing. And like I showed a few people Miro. And they were like, it's something out of like, uh, you know, Star Wars. And I was like, I'm not saying I'm the greatest person at Miro, but I'm like, it's not, it's great, but it's not like kind of the world's greatest thing. And they're, they're looking at it like it's alien. And I, and, but then it kind of, I realized the same, like what you said, Simon, is that you need to then think, okay, so how do you use, or how do you currently do training? And how can we take that little step? um so like for example they kept on insisting like no we're going to go back to face-to-face training i was like oh no we got to do we got to keep you know uh, uh, at least hybrids and they're like no 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 no. we're going to do this and, but now i've kind of you know as i'm doing more of these trainings i'm realizing that if i try to force it it would actually make the it make it worse less people would do training less people would develop themselves because mm-hmm. the technology puts them up puts it off or puts puts them off so it's about uh, adapting to what the company's got understanding where they are so rather than you saying and me saying that i've got this strategy and this is the way i'm going to go it's what where are they at the moment uh, what are they comfortable with picking out individuals finding those you know through the reports that you already get who are your keen learners um, like for example, we've started, and it's not even a technology thing. We've started an ambassador program, and it's it's a but it's a people program. So it's individuals uh, working with us to talk to other individuals in their own uh, branches and own uh, offices to talk to them about learning and to encourage them to take an online course or something like that. So it's not even a tool, but it's it suits their needs because that's the first step for them and then the next step is then right now you're there now you're thinking about training how can we think to help you make it even faster and etc etc so absolutely simon it's uh you got to know your audience as the uh, comedians always used to talk about um i'm interested anybody uh have any others uh 
Well, actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me go through some of the, uh, just my little experience with, with LXP, because I know I'm not saying we're running out of time, but um, I just wanted to kind of go through a couple of things that I know that some people may know, some people aren't maybe too familiar with. And to be honest, the things that I found that weren't in any of the manuals to kind of help to say how to do things. So um, for me, the first point would be, uh, and obviously with COVID restriction, all that kind of stuff, but um, if you can, go to, and if you're thinking about tooling and how to do it, go to these events. Uh, there's there's the learning technologies one that's now, it used to be in February, it's now in May in London Excel, uh, which I'm, uh, I'm going to. I think Berlin has a CEB, I think it's CEB event that's pretty big um, every year uh, that's, that's in Berlin on learning. Um, I'm thankful enough that my managers get uh, allow me to go to the uh, the learning dev uh, in Vegas in October, which I'm uh, really looking forward to. Um, but it's going out to those these events where you've got hundreds of tools, companies, and it's about just walking around, seeing what's out, what are the latest trends, what's going on, talking, not talking to them to say, I'm going to buy your products, but just having a conversation with them like kind of, um, you know, what's going on? What what do you find? And you'll find in, especially in learning technologies, they do these free little seminars. I mean, you can buy the, the kind of expensive conference ones, but you get free seminars. So for me, that's that first tip. Go not just do the research online. Um, I mean, I don't trust Fosway. I know Fosway are a big kind of, I just don't, everything I've heard from other people is that, it's more about how much you pay um, in terms of how high you are up rather than um, how good you really are. That's just my own personal preference. Maybe I'm tainted, but I don't trust them. I trust my own judgment of going around and seeing what's about. Um, then I think, you know, like Simon said, that kind of making sure what's your, um, what the, the needs are of your own team and kind of, where they where they want to go and how they feel about technology so you don't want to then implement an lxp when most of them don't even know how to use teams whatsapp slack all that kind of stuff it's just it's too much um but if you are going down that lxp route is you know and this is your finding in all the kind of manuals but uh requirements is a big thing and not just your requirements, go out to your business, go out to your individuals and ask them, um, and it's very similar to what Simon was saying, what's, what would you look for? How do you do training at the moment? And where are your challenges? What, what is stopping you or slowing you down from learning or developing or getting your skills? Um, and not to say, well, what tools would you want? But you use those requirements to, and then you then complete a requirements document that basically says in order to do a demo or even before you do demo, I mean, you can have demos just to see, is that a nice tool? Does it look all right? That kind of thing. But before you get even to the pilots and those kind of big mm -hmm. demos is they need to complete at least the RFP, uh, sorry, the, the requirements document, an RFP request for uh, price, is what we do where you basically sign a document to say, you know, we cost this much and all these kind of things. But the requirements is the biggest thing because it shows them um, that you're serious for one. And it shows them these are the things that not just I'm looking for, but that my company is looking for. And it's then it's almost like a checklist. And if, I mean, we had companies that we chucked out of our process because they can only meet 60%. Um, and they, they kept on saying things like, yeah, yeah, it's in our roadmap. Never, never trust anybody that says it's in a roadmap, ever. Again, apologies if you're a development, but they talk about, but if the number of times somebody said to me in learning and development, it's in the roadmap. And it's just like, really? To me, that's code. And again, Olga, I don't know if you're, obviously you come from the development side, but at least for me, every time they say it's in the roadmap, it's like, yeah, in other words, it's never going to happen. Uh, I have something to say about it. So what you can do, 
because this is something that I usually say. Hey guys, um, for example, in work academy, our roadmap is a live organism. It depends on uh, what customers needs and their pains and their challenges. And yeah, sometimes we talk to a potential client and they say, we need this integration. And I say, yeah, we can, uh, we can s s shift priorities and uh, uh, it will be part of roadmap. It's a good thing not to trust, but uh, there are contracts for that. So usually what we do yes. is that when we sign a contract, we say that, hey, this feature that doesn't exist will be implemented within 61st days of contract. And uh, like- if Yeah, hold them to account, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And then- uh, uh, we we never failed any of our promises yeah. you so. put basically put your money where your mouth is so i think yeah because if you i suppose it's you know you've got to know the person because that relationship building is i mean everybody says relationship building is important but when you're going out to find a vendor uh i don't know if anybody's heard the saying but you uh you you buy from people not from not you don't you buy i can't remember what they're saying is is you people buy from people yeah i think is it and, and, and to me, that's true is that I've, I've thrown vendors out of the process because I just, not that I don't trust them, but I don't connect with them. They, I, don't, they, I don't feel that they're connected with me. Um, and so to, to kind of make sure that you're having a good chat about, you know, not just the requirements, but maybe life in general, just are they on the same page as you? Uh, do, they, do they feel you? Do they get what you're trying to achieve? Or, or are you just another number? in their process or just another customer number. Um, but yeah, I think maybe don't trust the roadmap is maybe a bit too uh, harsh, but go in with, um, I suppose you could say, you know, maybe I love my sayings, like uh, you know, go to sleep with one eye open kind of thing. It's like, when it, I suppose what I'm saying is when everybody says it's in the roadmap, um, challenge them on it. Say, okay, so, what was the last what was the last 12 uh, six or quarter roadmap what did you deliver on that roadmap and so you get them to prove that and again if you've got a really good connection with a vendor and i'd like to think i have with all mine i i'm honest with them and going yeah really it, you know it's on the roadmap i've heard that one before and they're like yeah 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 i know everybody says it but and it just like i would have said but we put it in the contract we make yeah. sure that we say this is going to happen and those kind of things. I think then, so once you've got your requirements, um, you know, you, you're having your pilot sessions and all that kind of stuff. And, and for me, I think it was uh, Malika that said as well, is that the marketing side of things is so important. It shouldn't just be, hey, we've got this new platform, off you go. It's, I consider my, our, us much more around marketing, much more around um curating rather than creating mm -hmm. so it's about kind of for example in my old company we ran a whole program on learning mindsets and how to be self-developed how to be self-aware so you know what skills you've got and what you're, you're what you're missing um how to share information how to set up communities and we did this before we even had an lxp so we were just using sharepoint and we were just using chats we were using what the tools we had already and we had that mindset going and then the LXP just then speeds everything up. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you've got the, once you're going through the, the thing, my biggest tip for, for the LXP integration is that is integration. And um, you'll probably hear the term APIs. I can't, was it? Um, I can't remember what this, what it means, but an API is basically, one data set talking to another data set. And so they're, they're interchanging. Um, and the number of times you hear, very similar to this roadmap thing, that, oh yeah, yeah, we can integrate with that. And so to give you an example, I had Degreed and LinkedIn Learning. And they said, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we, we have an integration. I'm like, okay, fine, because I didn't know any better. Once, when, once they did the integration, um, what we found out was that uh, and again, I don't know if you're familiar with LinkedIn Learning, it's similar to most other ones, but you have a course title and then you have sub videos through that course title. So you might have, say, 20 videos all making up one course. Mm -hmm. But the integration within, uh, in this case, within Degree, and I think it's a case with a lot of other ones, 
is that they can only integrate the course title. So when I went into the greed and searched for, for example, presentation, mm -hmm. if I went into the greed and search presentation, it will come up with the course presentation. Mm -hmm. But if I went then went directly into LinkedIn Learning and search presentation, it would not only find all the courses, but it will find all the sub videos. So the micro learning that you're getting, the directness of you're getting. And to me, that was I actually then had a conversation with the chief learning officer of degrees on the phone with the chief learning officer of uh, LinkedIn Learning. I said, guys, what the hell is going on? Why? Because I just I from different contexts, I knew who they were. And I was like, why? Why the hell is not this being? Why do you call this an integration when it's not? And they came up with not excuses, but they came up with, yeah, it's not, it's not our priority. It's not on our roadmap, all this kind of stuff. Um, but it's so important when companies say, yes, we integrate with them, challenge them, ask them. So what, what do you mean by an integration? What actually do you see and ask them to show you what it actually looks like in their training environment, their sandbox, whatever it is, um, and so that when it is live and when you've got that mindset already, then it is what, you know, it, it does what it says in the tin, as we say in English. It's kind of, it is what it, 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 it what they've said is what you get. So that for me, that's the, the kind of the big ones is the um, trusting them, um, getting the requirements um, so that, and don't be afraid to throw companies out if they don't meet your requirements or they, you just don't trust them um make sure that you know, put their money where their mouth is with their roadmaps and make sure the when they say integration they mean integration um i, I agree with that uh but it's um uh, thank you simon thank you uh have a great day um have a good one Simon. Uh, i agree with that but uh Regarding the integration, I think that uh, the conversation should be um, like both ways. So, um, because, uh, for example, uh, for example, Workademy integrates with Personio. Personio is an HR tool, mm. and uh, it's a very simple integration, which is only synchronizing the, all the users from Personio to, to the work academy, which is already a great help for the HR teams because you don't have to put all the, um, all the employees uh, like one, one, one by one. Uh, and for, for most of the people, this integration is enough, but some people expect that if you integrate an LMS and Personio, then you have all the courses data uh, sitting somewhere in Personio and the charts can see all the analytics in Personio. So I think that uh, the questions should go both sides. Matching the expectations. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So expectations are really important. And uh, um, we as vendors, we should ask like, hey, what do you expect? What data from each system do you expect to see within another system that is integrated with this and why? Uh, it's very important. It's a, it's a great point because we're not, I mean, I'm not a, obviously I'm not a vendor, but I'm not technically minded. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, going through my last integration with Degreed, I learned about, you know, kind of, was it FTP files and SSOs and APIs? And I kind of heard them, but I didn't really understand them because I was the lead uh, on the integration. I had to sit on most of the calls and most of the time I was like, kind of, I got no idea what you're talking about, but I'm just going along with it. And you, then that's, so that's why you bring in an IT person, you know, so you're, it's not just you leading it. You need to have a board of people that can take each of these work streams and deal with the, the vendor from the integration perspective, because I wouldn't know, but you're absolutely right. It's the other way around. It's that the, the, the vendors need to come back and challenge us going, well, what are you actually expecting? Because a lot of the times what you expect and what you get mm -hmm. are two, uh, what, sorry, what you expect and what is reality is probably two different things. Cause you're thinking this, beautiful thing where the algorithms are completely interacting with everything and it knows your birthday and it knows <laughs> everything about you and it wakes you up in the morning and, and implants knowledge in your brain and you don't have to yeah it, but it's just not reality it's there is you know 
integrations there's full integrations depending on how much you pay and all this kind of stuff yeah. and uh, another thing is uh, not only asking like what do you expect but also why are you expecting this what Ooh, yeah buy yeah. into the why and yeah. usually uh, so if you ask why and then another why on the fifth why yeah. uh, you realize that the 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 problem is completely different that uh, you thought before yeah it's not a learning problem it's actually a manager problem for example yeah, for example yeah 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 uh, sometimes um, uh, what i like to ask uh, i ask this why 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 questions and uh, another thing that i like to ask when people say this is a huge problem the, the, and if it's solved i would pay every money for it to be solved and i ask okay what are you doing now to solve it? Ah, oh, nothing. Okay, then there is no problem. If yeah. you are not trying to solve it in some other way, then there is no problem. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's so asking why questions and also trying to understand what are you doing now? What is the path? So for example, for you, it would be that you had to search in degree, but you didn't have all the results. So you have to switch to another system and make your search. So, okay, we see already a lot of, uh, steps within this user journey and ideally we want to reduce it to the minimal amount of yeah. effort and we're seeing people are dropping off learning because they're not bothering and all that kind of stuff so yeah yeah no absolutely it's that i mean especially if you know if for example if you're going to have a big change like an lxp or even an lms or an hrs system or whatever it is then bring those people bring the vendor into your journey don't just kind of go right i need this you know yeah. like here's my goals and here's my vision and now i've got my vendor it should be a joint effort it should be them not necessarily being on every call but they should kind of feel almost part of the family um i mean i'm you know I, i'd probably like to say i'm pretty good friends now with uh, with the vendors that we've integrated in the past because i've spoken to them more than my wife in a lot of occasions um, and so, but they've got to be part of that journey. They've got to know and understand your, your pains and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I got, so Monica would so what is the best to build up needed? Sorry, best no. way. Um, <laughs> no, that's okay. one word. Yeah. But, so, you know, when you go into these projects, um, because they're very complex and you, I, I assume you also learn by making mistakes, um, oh, yeah. but <laughs> Still making them. if there is a, you know, what would be your recommendation when you go on this journey to introduce such a technology in to kind of build up language and understanding to talk to vendors as that's well? A, that's a good one. I, and I'm going to use my current exam, uh, uh, situation uh, because that's basically what I'm doing at the moment. So, um, there's there's two different routes you can go down now personally i would like more support from because i'm not saying i know uh tech strategy it's more that i know how important tools are and i really want to build these in but there are some people that are out there that have done this for you know year, built strategy for years and years and years so um for me personally i started by reaching out to all these different groups you know we've got lnd shakers um, the other great group that I would recommend is uh, Learning Sharks uh, by Christopher Lind is the, the lead of it. Um, and that is some a very, very good um, um, community. It's not necessarily as active as the Shakers. It's, uh, it's pretty inactive, but there is some very high powerful people in that group. Uh, a lot of CEOs, you know, chief learning officers of some big companies um and so i kind of delved into there and you know kind of asked about learning strategies and what people are doing and and what tools they're using and so i reached out to a lot of people in my network to kind of ask um so once i had a pretty good idea about um what i wanted to do where i wanted to go then my first port call was my manager i kind of said look you know i'm having an honest conversation i don't want to start anything yet but I can see there's gaps. I can see that there's an opportunity to really develop and push us into the future. Um, and what we did, and it kind of he, I was lucky enough that he's he agrees with me as well. But what we did is we then looked at the HR strategy 
and said, well, do is what we're doing or thinking about doing fitting going to fit in with their strategy or is it something different? Because if it's different, it's just not going to happen. So does it does it fit in with their their kind of way of thinking? And can the what we're going to do? So the strategy of tech, can it help HR to to speed up what they're doing? So can it support them? And hopefully the answer should be yes. And we can kind of identify where their uh, needs are. And then, at least for me, it's then about building a basic strategy of what I think would work and then aligning that with my manager and then aligning it with the HR leads to say, I feel this is a gap. This is why. So it's not about tools. Tools is almost the last thing you want to talk about. It's the why that you need to focus on. Why do we need a learning tech strategy if we don't have one before? Because bear in mind, a lot of people, especially the leadership, might take offense to say what you think we don't know what we're doing, what you, you don't think we've already got a strategy. And it's about making sure that you're not stepping on those toes. I tend to step on a lot of toes, as you can probably tell. Um, but it's about uh, finding that gap between telling them that they need a learning tech strategy, but understanding the why they, you know, what they've got at the moment and what you're going to do to improve it and why you're going to improve it and what the, the ultimate goal is. So not the details, but just the overall buy-in to say, we need to put something together. To give you a, a bit more of an example, within CH Robinson, within HR, we have a HR tech department. Mm -hmm. wow. And so when I went to our HR leaders and say, we need to do this, they went, well, we've already got this. We've already got a strategy. I went, okay, I haven't seen it. So I thought, okay, I'm new. I, I might have missed it. So I went looking and, and reached out to different people, reached out to the instructional designers and all these people. And I found these um, this uh, HR tech team. I said, so what's your strategy? And they showed me their, their, um, uh, their game plan and all that kind of stuff. But it was purely reactive and it was purely HR tools. So yeah. it was workday, not workday learning, but just workday and and kind of how they're improving the uh, how they're going to implement the updates to the platform over the year. So not how we're going to improve it and how we're going to build on it, just the platforms we've got at the moment. How do we roll that out? So then I went back to the HR team and said, you're right, there is a strategy, but it's a HR develop uh, update strategy it's not a tech strategy of where we're going to be in three five years time they don't have that and they're not looking at that they don't have the capacity to do that so what i'd like to do is is include all these different insights get people to think about all these different things get this everybody thinking on the same page and then having that strategy and that's what i'm building at the moment so i'm building the framework making sure they're all included not pardon my French, but not pissing off anybody um, by not including them or as you know, kind of saying that they're what they're doing doesn't matter. It's such a difficult one to 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 walk if you've got a big HR department. Um, and then it's then it's like, right, okay, once we've got the strategy in, then it's right, what tools do we need? And then then it's the whole you know, going out to vendors, looking at different vendors, what exactly we need, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I hope that makes make made some sense. Uh, yeah, we we have to wrap up. I think oh. it was. Uh, oh yeah, God, I talked too. Much. Yeah, oh. the, we didn't notice. Yeah, it's <laughs> a super nice conversation, and I think we could uh, launch another event on this uh, because uh, it seems to be pretty interesting for everyone, and we haven't. Uh, 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 it's just uh, the top of the of an oh yeah tip of the iceberg yeah 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 uh, thank you very much i will uh, write a follow-up and summary of um, this um, event and uh, send to all of you and uh, yeah i if you want to chat to one-on-one -on -one with me 
uh, you can see I'm a little bit into tech. So if you want to chat about, uh, I don't know, integrations, uh, SSEO APIs, uh, uh, needs, uh, whatever, if you want to be challenged by me with a lot of why, 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 why questions to uh, come uh, to an answer what exactly is needed, you feel free to schedule a session with me. I love uh, talking about it. And uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, let's uh, keep in touch. And, Perfect. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And Alga, thank you for organizing this. And, and thank you for everybody for the great questions and stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, I look forward to, to chatting you on, on LinkedIn or wherever it be. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Cheers, Bye. everybody. Thanks. Bye.